One of the things I wanted to show you today is part of the virtual East Boulder County Artist Studio Tour is how I go about waxing a sculpture. And this is important for waxing a bronze in order to protect the patina. When the coloring is added on the bronze, um, it is also lacquered and that lacquer protects the patina. But then in order to keep the lacquer um, as strong as possible, wax is put over top of that. There's all different kinds of waxes that can be used. Some of them have some coloring and pigment in there. But basically what I use is Johnson's Paste Wax. So a few of the considerations are that this could um, yellow just a little bit over time, but it is readily available, it's strong, it's easy to apply, and it's easy to buff. So um, for the most part, it is, you know, very commonly used. Another one is tray wax. Tray wax tends to be extremely clear, but it also is a little bit harder. So one of the things that I found with that is, especially if it ends up being put on the sculpture when the sculpture is cold, it might leave just a little bit of like white um, dust almost that needs to come, you need to come back and brush that off or just watch out for it to make sure that it doesn't, you know, affect the appearance. So some of it is personal taste, some of it is from experience and almost everything that I've learned about um, waxing sculptures has come from art castings of Colorado, a foundry that I use up in Loveland. So there's a few things to also keep in mind. You do not need to put very much wax on a sculpture. And when you put it on there, you want to make sure that you're using um, a brush that has had any medical uh, metal parts uh, covered with tape. I know I said medical, but I guess I'm thinking about her. I want to make sure that I keep her as safe as possible. <laughs> Um, but the masking tape has been put around the metal portion of the brush because this metal on a brush would scratch the patina and I don't want to damage the sculpture, especially when all I'm trying to do is protect it. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention, you might find other types of wax too. I've tried a few of these, you know, um, bowling alley wax and then also min wax just because this tended to be easier to find at hardware stores, but I did not like the effect of those and also just from um, trying to have consistency with what I know the foundry has already put on my sculptures, I want to use the same thing. That way there's less variation and less of a chance of either the wax not staying on as long as I want or ending up changing the coloring. Usually, as long as the sculpture is kept indoor, you know, dusted it off, I would only need to wax something like this maybe once a year, once every couple of years. I'm sorry, every a couple of times per year. And it really depends upon how much sheen that you want on it. But after going all the way around the sculpture, really lightly putting on a layer, you wait until this dries, kind of hardens. You'll see it get just a little bit more dull or opaque. And then you'll know it's time to come back and buff it off. So I had already put a little bit on earlier on the back. You might not be able to tell from the photo that much of a difference, but when I come in here and buff it off, making sure that there's no rings on my fingers, no watch, don't scratch it with anything else, just coming back in with more pressure, trying not to touch it with your skin, just touching it and buffing it, um, I guess like you would a, a nice car. Treating these like a sports car is probably not a bad thing. Um, just making sure that I keep the sculpture out of direct sunlight. And then also making sure that it never gets any pop or soda sprayed on there. Especially not any Windex. Because the coloring, this patina, was done with heat and chemicals and or maybe some lacquer dyes or acrylic. Any of those other chemicals, again, in like soda or cleaning materials will interact with that and will either spot it 
or possibly even wear off parts of the patina. You don't want that. A lot of care and artistry is put into creating the patina. The last thing you want to do when you're trying to protect it is change it in any way. So even the wood base and even the label ends up um, having a little bit of a layer of wax put over there. This also helps, especially when you live in a dry area like we do in Colorado, to try to make sure that the wood doesn't end up cracking. So I might put just a little bit more on the wood than I normally would on the, the metal because it will tend to soak in just a little bit more on that wood and it doesn't soak in on the metal. A little bit later today, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process on some sculptures that are outside. I'm waiting for um, it to warm up a little bit out there.